Hello and welcome to Fast and Factual. I'm Utsav Parekh and here are the top stories of the day. A powerful 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake hit Taiwan this morning. At least four people have died and over 700 have been injured. Footage showed collapsed buildings and widespread destruction following the quake. This was the strongest earthquake to hit the island in 25 years. U.S. President Joe Biden and Chinese leader Xi Jinping held a phone call yesterday. This was the first time they had spoken since their meeting in November last year. They discussed a wide range of issues, including stability in Taiwan, territorial disputes in the South China Sea, and Washington's concerns over the ownership of the social media platform TikTok. The White House says that the leaders had constructive talks. However, it added that there were significant disagreements over Taiwan and economic issues. She called American interference in the South China Sea a red line. North Korea claims that it tested a new hypersonic intermediate range missile yesterday. They released footage showing their leader Kim Jong-un watching the test launch. The launch took place at the outskirts of the capital Pyongyang. South Korea and Japan have condemned this missile launch. Indonesia's president-elect Prabowo Subianto met Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida this morning. During the meeting, Prabowo said that he wants to further strengthen relations between the two countries. Meanwhile, Kishida said that Japan hopes to contribute to Indonesia's development in areas including infrastructure and energy. Thailand's Constitutional Court has accepted a case seeking the dissolution of the Move Forward Party. This is the party that won the most votes in Thailand's general election last year. Thailand's Election Commission, Commission has requested the dissolution of the party. This is for its controversial campaign to reform a law that shields the Thai monarchy from criticism. World leaders have condemned Israel for the killing of seven aid workers in the Gaza Strip. US President Joe Biden has said that he is outraged and heartbroken. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak spoke with Israeli PM Benjamin Netanyahu and demanded an immediate probe. Meanwhile, Israel has apologized for the deaths, saying it mistakenly killed the aid workers. Netanyahu said that the airstrikes uh, that hit them were unintended. Meanwhile, the Israeli police dispersed a large group of protesters who had gathered outside Netanyahu's residence. They were protesting against the Netanyahu government and exemptions from military service granted to ultra-Orthodox Jewish men. Reports say that five protesters were arrested for disrupting order. After Monday's attack on the Iranian embassy compound in Syria, the U.S. has warned Iran not to retaliate against it. The deputy U.S. ambassador to the U.N. said, and I quote, we will not hesitate to defend our personnel. He added that Washington had no prior warning of the strike. On Monday, Iran accused America's ally Israel of bombing its embassy compound in Syria. Tehran has vowed revenge. At least 29 people were killed after a fire broke out at a nightclub in central Istanbul. The Masquerade nightclub was undergoing renovations when the fire broke out. Turkish officials are investigating the blaze and have detained several people. The cause of the fire is not yet known. Six primary school children were killed and another 14 were injured in a road accident in Iraq. A truck veered into the group of children after its brakes failed and the driver lost control. Iraq's Prime Minister has ordered an immediate investigation into the fatal accident. A 12-year-old child was killed in a school shooting incident in Finland yesterday. Two others have been seriously injured. The suspect is another 12-year-old student. He has been arrested. The suspect was carrying a licensed handgun owned by a close relative. Finnish officials say that the motive of the shooting is not yet known. A mayoral candidate in Mexico City has been shot dead. She was shot during an event on the first day of her campaign. Officials say that they're investigating the killing. However, no arrests have been made so far. This comes ahead of Mexico's general elections, scheduled for June. 
Basiro Diomai Fai was sworn in as Senegal's president yesterday. After this, Fai appointed firebrand politician Usman Sonko to the post of prime minister. Last month, Fai won Senegal's presidential election with over 54% of the vote. With his swearing in, the 44-year-old has become Africa's youngest ever elected president. In climate news, a severe storm swept through the Midwestern U.S. yesterday. It brought damaging winds and hail across the Ohio Valley. As a result, more than 200,000 residents faced power outages in West Virginia. Meanwhile, tornadoes were reported in Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee and Georgia. According to American weather officials, more than 9 million people were under a tornado watch yesterday. Flash floods have killed at least one person in Ecuador's capital, Quito. Authorities evacuated 16 children from a kindergarten in the city. Officials say the situation appears to be similar to that of January 2022, when floods claimed lives of over 20 people in Quito. Meanwhile, Kazakhstan has been hit by the worst floods in three decades. The Kazakh Disaster Agency says around 16,000 people have been rescued across the country. Officials say the situation is worse in five regions in north and east Kazakhstan at the border with Russia. Kazakhstan's Prime Minister said the floods are impacting areas that have never been affected before. Meanwhile, an ecological organization in Kazakhstan has reported a large oil spill. The organization says that the oil spill is in the Caspian Sea, near Kazakhstan's giant Kashagan oil field. Kashagan is one of the country's largest oil fields. It is being developed by the North Caspian Operating Company Consortium, which includes Shell, Eni, Total Energies and ExxonMobil. Hundreds of schools in the Philippines have suspended classes due to dangerous heat waves. Primary and secondary schools in the capital Manila and in Quezon City have been ordered to stop in-person classes. This is after the Philippines Weather Agency said that the country's temperatures are likely to rise to as high as 42 degrees Celsius today. March 2024 was the warmest uh, year on record for Germany, uh, month on record for Germany. This is according to the country's weather agency, the DWD. The agency has said that the average temperature in March uh, was 7.5 degrees Celsius. This is over 4 degrees above the average temperature recorded between 1961 and 1990, which is used as the reference point by the agency. The first three months of 2024 were likely the hottest in Spain as well. The country's weather agency says that the average temperature in mainland Spain was 9.5 degrees Celsius from January to March. Meanwhile, a drought emergency has been declared for Spain's second largest city, Barcelona, and surrounding regions. On to business and tech news. The US saw over 1.7 million layoffs in February this year. This is according to data released by the US Labor Department yesterday. Data showed that, lay that the layoff rate in the country rose by over 1% in February. Meanwhile, new job openings in the US increased slightly during the month. As per the report, employers in the country posted over 8.76 million job vacancies in February 2024. This is up from 8.75 million job openings reported in January. Tesla's car deliveries declined by over 8.5% in the first quarter of 2024. The firm reported that it delivered nearly 387,000 cars to customers in the first three months of 2024. This is the slowest quarterly shipment by the firm in the last four years. Tesla has said that the shutdown of the German plant and expansion work at the California factory have led to slower car deliveries. Toyota has reported a 20% rise in first quarter car sales in the US. The firm sold over 565,000 cars in the first three months of 2024. This is compared to just 470,000 cars sold in the same period last year. Toyota said that demand for its sedans, SUVs and pickup trucks has helped push sales in the country. 
Meanwhile, General Motors reported a 1.5% fall in first quarter auto sales in the US. The car maker sold over 594,000 cars in the period. This is compared to over 600,000 cars sold in the same period last year. Workers at car maker Mercedes-Benz's assembly plant in the U.S. state of Alabama are planning to unionize. This is according to the firm's union leader, Tim Smith. Smith has said that the workers plan to file a petition to form a union as soon as this week. He added that the workers want to join the Detroit-based car union, the United Auto Workers Union. This comes a month after a majority of the plant's 6,000 workers signed a petition to unionize in February. General Electric's aviation and energy businesses were listed on the New York Stock Exchange yesterday. With this, the firm has completed the breakup process of its three business units. General Electric's restructuring process began last year. These split-offs are part of the company's efforts to revive its business. General Electric has suffered due to poor investment and high debt, which led to a nearly near bankruptcy of the firm during the 2008 financial crisis. A union representing the workers of U.S. Steel has rejected an appeal sent by Nippon. Nippon had sent them a letter asking them to support its acquisition bid for U.S. Steel. Earlier, it had agreed to buy U.S. Steel for roughly $15 billion. However, the deal faces criticism over concerns about possible job losses after the takeover. Tech giant Intel is facing deep losses at its chip-making unit. The firm has reported over $7 billion in losses for its chip manufacturing business for 2023. This is compared to over $5 billion in losses the previous year. This comes as the firm has been heavily investing in the custom chip manufacturing business. Intel has been trying to regain its lead in the chip sector from Taiwan's TSMC. The U.S. Cyber Safety Review Board has said that the cyber attack on tech giant Microsoft's system last year was preventable. The board has said that it found cybersecurity lapses and a lack of transparency in the firm's system, which made Microsoft's system more vulnerable to the attack. Last year, Microsoft reported that Chinese hackers stole hundreds of thousands of emails from its system. This included emails of top of American officials like Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo and U.S. Ambassador to China Nicholas Burns. Yahoo has acquired the artificial intelligence-powered news platform Artifact. The firm was set up by Instagram's co-founder Kevin Sistrom and Mike Krieger. However, it has been struggling to remain afloat due to a lack of advertising sales. Yahoo says it will incorporate Artifact's AI technology across its US news sites. Moving to sports, we start with cricket and the IPL. The Lucknow Supergiants beat Royal Challengers Bengaluru by 28 runs yesterday. In the first inning, Quentin de Kock's 81 helped Lucknow post a total of 181 for 5 against RCB. Then Mayank Yadav's searing spells annihilated the RCB batters. The 21-year-old pacer took three crucial wickets while giving away only 14 runs. Yesterday's match marked Bengaluru's third defeat in the IPL this season. India's cricket board, the BCCI, has rescheduled two IPL matches. The Kolkata Knight Riders and the Rajasthan Royals were supposed to play on April 17th. This was at the Eden Gardens in Kolkata. The match will now be held a day earlier on April 16th. Meanwhile, Gujarat Titans vs Delhi Capitals at the Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad will now be played on April 17th. It was initially supposed to be held the previous day. England all-rounder Ben Stokes has opted out of the T20 Cricket World Cup. Stokes asked the English cricket board not to consider him for the tournament. He said that he wants to get fit enough to play as an all-rounder. Last year, Stokes had come out of retirement to be available for the 2023 ODI World Cup. In tennis, India's Sumit Nagal has won the opening round of the Marrakesh Open. He downed Corentin Moutet of France 4-6, 6-3-6-2 to enter the round of 16. Nagal next faces fourth-seeded Italian Lorenzo Sonego. It's going to be a repeat of the first-round clash from this year's Dubai Championships. 
In football, Cristiano Ronaldo netted the 65th hat-trick of his career yesterday. It was for the Saudi Pro League club Al Nasser. Al Nasser thrashed Abha 8-0 in yesterday's lopsided match. Ronaldo hit his hat-trick in the first half, setting the tone for the drubbing. It was also his second hat-trick in as many games. Two key Manchester United defenders have been ruled out due to injury issues. Argentina international Lisandro Martinez has suffered a calf strain in training. Victor Lindelof hurt his hamstring during Saturday's Premier League match against Brentford. Man United say the two defenders won't be able to play for at least a month. Fenerbahce won't be withdrawing from the Turkish Super League. In March, the club had said that it would consider pulling out of the tournament. This was after their players were attacked by Trabzonspor fans during a match. But now, Fenerbahce members have voted against the team's exit from the Turkish League. The All India Football Federation, or AIFF, has suspended Executive Committee member Deepak Sharma. He's accused of physically assaulting two women footballers in the Indian state of Goa. They were playing in the Indian Foot uh, Women's Football League Second Division. The two footballers allege that Sharma physically assaulted them on the night of March 28th. Global Sports' top court, known as the Court of Arbitration for Sport, has upheld a decision by the International Olympics Committee involving the International Boxing Association. Back in June, the International Olympics Committee refused to recognize the Boxing Association over its reforms on finance. Now, the top sports court has dismissed the IBA's appeal against the removal of its status. Boxing is still part of the upcoming Olympics, but the IOC will be supervising it without the International Boxing Association's involvement. Singapore has reportedly opted out of hosting the 2026 Commonwealth Games. This further raises concerns about the multi-sport event's future. The Games were last held in 2022, and the Commonwealth Games Federation has been struggling to find the next host. The Australian state of Victoria decided to withdraw its bid to host the event last year due to soaring costs. In entertainment news, Taylor Swift has joined the list of the world's richest people for the first time. She's among 141 new billionaires featured in the recent Forbes list. Swift has, ha has an estimated net worth of $1.1 billion. Last year, her ongoing Eras tour surpassed $1 billion in revenue. According to the list, there are over 2,700 billionaires in the world. Lizzo has clarified that she is not leaving the music industry. This comes days after the singer said she was quitting because she was tired of being trolled online. The Grammy winner has now clarified that she wants to quit giving attention to negative energy. Recently, Lizzo faced massive criticism for allegedly fat shaming one of her dancers. The singer herself has built her reputation on body positivity. Jennifer Lopez has rebranded her upcoming tour to broaden its scope. This comes after she cancelled seven shows in several US cities due to poor sales. Earlier, her tour was focused on songs uh, from her new album. However, now the tour will reportedly include her greatest hits of all time. Rumours indicate that Kylie Jenner and Timothy Chalamet are expecting their first child together. This comes after the comedian Daniel Tosh discussed their alleged pregnancy on his podcast. Tosh claimed that the couple has filmed a pregnancy video for the season finale of The Kardashians. However, other reports say the speculation might not be true. Benedict Cumberbatch and Olivia Colman will star in the remake of The War of the Roses. Makers of the film say it'll be a wildly funny yet deeply human story. The original dark comedy drama was released in 1989. It was based on the novel of the same name that was released in 1981. Lady Gaga is set to star alongside Joaquin Phoenix in the upcoming sequel to Joker. The makers have released an audio snippet of Lady Gaga's take on the character of Harley Quinn. Additionally, the movie's poster shows Phoenix and Lady Gaga dancing. The psychological thriller is a musical extension of the 2019 DC film. 
monster film Godzilla x Kong The New Empire has crossed the rupees 50 crore box office mark in India. The film has surpassed the latest Bollywood releases like Crew at the box office. In just the first week, the movie is on course to beat the lifetime collection of Godzilla vs Kong which was released in 2021. American TV show Grey's Anatomy has been renewed for its 21st season. It's expected to have 18 episodes, up from 10 episodes in the 20th season. The series is the longest-running primetime medical drama in television history. Last month, the show debuted on the streaming platform Hulu. Late comedian George Carlin's estate has settled a lawsuit over an AI-generated video of him. The creators have agreed to remove the imitation from their YouTube channel and podcast. In January, comedy podcast Dudesy released an hour-long special on Carlin, which was created using artificial intelligence. Carlin's estate then sued the podcast for allegedly, vi allegedly violating his, its copyrights. The American comedian died in, 20, in 2008 at the age of 71. K-drama actor Lee Jae Wook and K-pop star Karina have officially ended their relationship. The couple broke up five weeks after publicly acknowledging their relationship. According to reports, the split was due to mental stress caused by negative comments. The star duo's affair did not receive the support uh, of their fans, which even forced Karina to issue a public apology. That's all for this episode of Fast and Factual. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to First Post. From impeachments to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issues, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.